Hey guys, Ali here. How are you doing? Uh, welcome back to an, uh, a Layman's Insights and another episode of Disco Elysium, where we just had a like a weird event happen, and a couple of little discoveries have been made regarding the pale. I'm just gonna go around. I've already talked to Edhead, Egghead, sorry, at the beginning of the last episode, sorry, the end of the last episode, to kind of talk to him about it. But I'm gonna talk to everybody else now, and then we'll uh, head back into town. I think. Let's start with the cell. All right, there's nothing to talk to her about here. Give her a hat. Oh yeah, I gave her a hat already. I wonder if I can, uh, I can maybe succeed with this this time. The device ah. Is light. An angular Omicron logo adorns the yellow plastic cover. Underneath, you see a reel of tape rolling. We put the device back on the floor. Okay, so I'm gonna not talk to her. She doesn't have anything to say. How about you, Noid? Right, What's on your mind? I wanted to talk some more about this place. Body, spirit entered. What is there to talk of? You say that as a carpenter yourself. I don't say much anything as a carpenter anymore. They tried to make me into a reckoner and a leveller. It made me a bit manic, you know. Alright. I regret the time I dedicated to that profession and that work I collected. I say things more as a member of the hardcore side dance community these days. You're not going to ask me how I knew? Why? You're a cop. That's true. I carry carpentry tools. Let's talk about something else, Noid. Sure. Take care, Noid. And let's talk to Andre, the ringleader. Oh, hey, man. It's good to see you. Eh, uh, no. Okay. So there's not really much to discuss beyond the uh, event itself, which is fine. Hold on, I just want to check something here. Yeah, okay, that's fine. I just wanted to see if there's anything up there to interact with, but I couldn't find anything. Let's get out of the damn club and get out of this music area. Oof. The beat is fat. That is a fat beat. All right. Okay. Oh, yeah, still need, I still need to phone that in and so and look into that case as well. Yeah. Okay. We, I'm going to go and quickly check the, the trap that we set. Cleaning out the rooms. Cleaning out the rooms. Someone's been walking around in your dreams lately. Looking for something. Tidying up, rearranging. Storing away all the unrealized dreams. Putting old pains in boxes. The worst nightmares have settled down for a while. A spot of light on the bedroom door after the dark. The fluttering of eyelids in the spring sun, a thought that arises, only to disappear again. And yet there's a pattern emerging. Ooh. That sounds like a good one to learn. Okay, I'm gonna go check that trap to see if there's anything in it. Oh, actually, no, I need to report back to Lena because I set the trap. I put the locusts in there, didn't I? So, yeah, we'll quick travel to the, uh, the cafeteria map travel. All right. So. That was kind of weird. Hey, who's this? Who are these guys? That's one brutal motor carriage. Says a young man with uh, piss something written on his back. If I were a real skull now, I'd jack it, paint it in palm tree livery, then bottom light it neon style. His companion wears a simple yet elegant slogan, fuck the world. <laughs> a snazzy shit-ripped skullmobile like this would make a fine trophy. 
We could, like, hang fucking shrunken heads from the side mirrors. Cops heads. Scary tribal shit. All right. Yeah, tribal shit. A cop carriage like this would have proper skull value. Who are these guys? <clears throat> well, I appreciate the interest you take in my brutal motor carriage. I have to stop you right there. The RCM takes threats directed at its property seriously. I, um, it's just theoretical work, copper. No basis in reality. Man, if we were certified skulls right now... Who are you? I can tell you who we're not, cop. We're not snitches, flow bears, or skulls. Which is not to say that the skulls are bitches and... On the contrary. The part of this presentation you want to take home with you, cop man, is we're not part of the skulls yet. All right. Okay, then. Let's indulge in some intellectual exchange. These young men seem eager to share their beliefs. Who are the skulls? You don't know? What kind of cop are you? It's not a question. Don't get into it. Hmm, of course I do. I'm just testing you boys. The Skulls are the most vicious gang of the Besmertnay. His voice rings with excitement. The nastiest bunch of psychos ever. Wow. Jacking carriages and getting into high speed chases. Okay. Possessing an infinite amount of fuck all swagger, <laughs> infamous for their non verbal modus operandi. Non verbal? If a skull spots you, he will pull out his dagger and stab you without saying a word. The lieutenant's voice is as calm as usual. A testament to the violence and death he's witnessed through the sight of his firearm. They usually occupy the burnt out quarter in Jamrock, or you can find them loitering around the brightly painted bottom lighted vehicles. Hmm. Ah, uh, I can't wait to become a skull. Bottom lights are wretched aggressive. Do you know Cindy the skull? Oh, yeah. Cindy's a right proper skull. The young man's eyes glaze over, his voice filled with longing. Yeah, a true artist of the future, just like Arno Van Eyck. Oh, this guy seems to be really famous, this Arno guy. Uh, by the way, if you see Cindy, give her our regards. Ooh. He adds, returning from whatever void he was visiting. For all their nihilistic posturing, these young men are not lacking in youthful idealism. Odd, there isn't a hint of hate in them. It's like they're piss and fuck the world out of some kind of moral obligation. The lieutenant on your left is unusually lenient toward them. Hmm, I see you kids are into anodic dance music. Oh man, yeah. We're not fucking kids, man. Be wary of the abyss. His blonde friends adds ominously and points to his temple. Why? Probably because of how non-verbal their mode of operation is going to be. It's a threat. Uh, a threat? Good, I like those. <laughs> Don't fuck with me, boys. I'm one of the bad cops. Nah, I just wanted to talk about music and now there's a conflict all of a sudden. It's too much. A threat? Good, I like those. But I don't. In fact, I dislike them so much, I'm willing to drag you boys back to the station just to calm myself down. Wow, Kim's got something stuck up his backside just now. Hey, uh, there's no need for that. We're just talking here. Joking, too. Stay light, man. Yeah. Didn't you cops, like, have some questions about skulls or some shit? Um. Why aren't there more skulls in Martinez? The Union does their share of policing in Martinez, at least where gangs are concerned. That's why there isn't much organized crime around here. Except from the Union. Don't you worry about that. We're gonna make up for the deficit. Wow. Yeah, we are. The young men exchange approving nods. Your rhetoric is confusing. Are you part of the skulls or not? We're not franchise skulls. Well, not yet. Once we get our name out there, we'll have a chance to join them. And what makes you think that the organization would accept you? Because we can be just as psycho and vicious. You'll see. 
but in a non-threatening and definitely legal way. The other one quickly adds and whispers something to his friend. We'll fuck the system from the inside later. Just be cool now. The damage will be tenfold. Right on, fuck. So what's happening now? Enough about this scullery then. Mm -hmm. Do you know anything about the murder that took place here? Murder? A man was hanged in the backyard of the Whirling and Rags. Yeah, sure. We'll gladly tell you everything we know about it. <clears throat> it was a man. Ten points to that guy. Also, he was hanged. Anything else? He was hanged from a tree. I didn't say that he was hanged from a tree. Yeah, I mean, duh. These punks don't know anything. Let's just move along. Hey, stop right there. How does one know anything? I'm not going to entertain you with this any longer. Sure, sure. Understandable. Fuck and I appreciate your effort, though. <laughs> What's with the jackets? What about them? Turn to the blonde youth. Why does your uh, jacket have piss something written on it? Well, first off, it's a statement and not necessarily something that characterizes me as a person, even though the statement has character. And I do like piss. Uh, okay. The word piss f epitomizes the struggle taking place in the world. Things being defined as they seem, not as they are. And, I guess, it's also about communal spirit, the future, and truly appreciating our differences. Also, you've got to admit, it catches the eye. And since the Grand Piper is slowly but steadily moving towards basing the economy on it, attention, it is imperative that the medium itself convey the message. Ha. Very nice. Makes sense. What I mean by this is we are all pissed <laughs> and that the world is inherently meaningless. And turn to the dark haired youth. Why do you have fuck the world written on your jacket? Like I said before, many men keep searching for the one, for so called true love, which is actually just obsession masquerading as kinship. The thrill of the chase, the hollowness that fills your chest cavity after catching it. Okay. I'm wondering if the poetics come with the jacket, or are they derived from something else entirely? <laughs> to catch a fish, you'll need to hurl the law many times, and even then it isn't certain that you'll get anything. If you blow up the lake, though... Blow it up? You get more fish in a shorter time. And, for time is of the essence and fleeting ever so quickly, one must think of a way to fuck the whole world and not get caught up in fucking some one. Oh, okay. That's, uh... Okay. Because when one fucks everything, he fucks nothing. And that, to me, feels glorious. Sticking your dick into the void. All right. <laughs> I hate to admit it, but in a weird way, He's got a point. He does. I just don't quite understand what the motivation is. <laughs> That's all. Is it a coincidence that here we have two badass jackets and two badass cops? Hey, Kim. Yes? What do you think about their jackets? Leather jackets adorned with immature writing? The ideology they convey helps the boys justify poor choices in life and fashion. I'm not a fan. Ah... Uh... Sure, the jackets are scaring you, that's cool. What are you implying? Mm, which one would you wear? I'm not sure I understand you, detective. Are you that? Are you... Or are you fuck the world kind of guy? Neither. Oh, come on, Kim, it's just a mental exercise. Fine, if only to end this discussion. Theoretically, if I were a juvenile delinquent, if I were to already be down that path, I think peace is the stronger of the two statements. That works. I feel more like the fuck the world kind of guy. Seems about right, especially considering your 
heroic exit attempts. <laughs> That's an origin story for a dynamic duo right there. So are we done here? Or you don't need us around for your secret whisper party, do you? Ask for the jackets. No, oh, no, no way. No. Yes. Don't ask anything. <laughs> Be subtle and scary. The boys dream about being skulls. Use that. Mm. Boys, with those jackets, you're going to be skull kings in no time. What? No. Skulls don't have kings. I think. And we're not even in yet. Yeah, man. Keep your voice down. Skulls don't take it lightly when folks pretend to be them. We're not even prospects yet. Prospect must be a hierarchical term. Probably in the lower end. Not even prospects yet and already aspiring to be kings. Wow, you boys are ambitious. Only prospects and already planning a coup in the skulls. You are destined to go far. Ha, <laughs> Kim. Thanks, man. You totally backed me up there. He gets it. Passive aggressive flattery. Shut the fuck up. Are you trying to get us killed? Now bring it to the jackets and, yes, start shouting. Yeah, we want to be cool killer skulls too, like like you guys, but we don't have skull jackets. Please be quiet. What? What do you want? The, the jackets? You got it. No need for cruelty. Uh, let's see here. You offer us the jackets like that? It'd be impolite to refuse. Oh, man. Okay. <laughs> I get it. Skulls don't really wear slogans anyway. This was stupid. Yep. Fuck. Thank you very much. Wow, you look like normal people now. The lieutenant watches the boys take their jackets off with mild amusement. Let's see here. Turn to Kim. Since you said you're more of a that guy, I'll take the other one. I know you said you're more of that guy, but I think I should have it for myself. Nah, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll go with the original agreement. I'm absolutely okay with not having either one. Thank you. Why not? They're a pair. We could really raise hell, go undercover. Hard. This case doesn't require us to go undercover or raise hell. In fact, I don't think the jackets will be useful at all. I just wanted them to not have them anymore. But Kim... Cold-hearted cop. Well, whatever. I'll take both of them then. Do. I'm fine with <laughs> The jackets are meant to complete each other. If a man was standing alone on a street corner with piss written on his back, It'll just be an individual that has taken a liking to you, right? <laughs> fuck the world all on its own is, frankly, generic. That is true. I don't know, Eric. It's cold out. The dark-haired young man just stands there, defeated. The wind blows, and you can start to see the stiff nipples pointing through his top. Yeah, let's get out of here. The cops fucked us. Yeah. Don't you ever forget it! Damn! <laughs> oh, that was fun. I like that. Okay, let's see what these clothes do for us now. This one here, minus one to authority, plus one to drama, plus one to half-life, minus one to rhetoric. What's half-life again? I keep forgetting. Oh, yeah, threatening people. Nah, I'll just, I'll just go back to that. Oh, that was a fun little exchange. Oh, wait, can I, can I sell these? I could sell these, right? Oh, no. I don't know where I'd sell them. Okay. Uh, let's go and report to Lena. And then after we've done that, we'll report the the uh, dead guy on the boardwalk. I can't believe I've not done that yet. Got sidetracked by all the church shenanigans and the, the traps and all that stuff. Let's talk to Lena. Oh, where's the husband gone? Hello, dear. It's good to see a familiar face. The elderly woman smiles at you, hopefully. I restocked the empty trap. Where's Morel? 
Thank you for doing that, dear. She manages a smile for you. Her smile is weary. Her earlier ebullience has left her. Oh. Morel still isn't feeling well. I convinced him to stay at Gary's to get some rest. I'm afraid the cold has really gotten to him. Hmm. It's probably for the best. It's awfully cold out in those reeds. I'm sorry, dear. You've had to drudge through them so many times. Such is field work. A young person's game, as they say. Yeah. Her voice is shaky. What is going on here? So, who's going to check the traps? Morel will eventually. Or we'll talk Gary into going back out, perhaps. The lieutenant stares at his shoe, caked in mud. He doesn't say anything. We'll take care of it. That really is too much, sweetie. Thank you for your dedication, but I can see you're coming down with a cough yourself. Oh. Very strange. Why is she not letting you do this? It's like she's given up. Lena, what's wrong? You seem different. Different? How? The half moons of her glasses reflect you as she looks up at you. You've given up on the phasmid. I'm in doubt, sweetie. That's all. Everyone is now and then. You're in doubt about what? It's a... Uh, a strange feeling. I haven't really told this to anyone, but... You are a police officer. Do you ever wonder if some lovely story from your childhood is just that? A story or a dream? Hmm. Seeing the Insulindian Phasmid was just a story I used to tell people. I didn't really think about whether it was real or not. But Morel told me you'd seen it. You also told me. Morel's so proud of it. He always tells everyone. Oh, big mouth that guy has. A terrible sting in the heart. Regret. Yeah. You seem to really believe it happened. Doesn't that count for something? No, sweetie. There's more to it than that. Morel was so eager to believe my story was evidence of the Phasmid's existence. Mm -hmm. That I'm some queen of the cryptozoologists. That. And for years, his belief made me believe too. But now... We're both getting old, and he's still working himself sick out in those reeds looking for it. But what if I was just wrong? I think I was. The lieutenant opens his notebook, but doesn't write anything. <sighs> Thing is, you're not sure you made it up either. I'm not sure of anything. Sometimes I still see it, you know. The real memory. Not the memory of the memory, but it's so hard to tell the two apart. Either way, I should go. Poor Morel is running a fever, and I need to get him home to Jamrock before we overstay our welcome with Gary. Are you sure you don't need help getting to Gary's? Oh no, thank you, but I can get there on my own. This old thing is gas-powered. Oh, cool. And then a taxi home. It's not so bad. All right, you do that. I'll check the traps one more time. Really? Yes, Kim, come on. Get back me up here. Oh, sweetie. Please don't get stuck on a dream. Take it from me and Morel. Can I have your address just in case there's news? Okay. It's 1113 Tabernacle Road. Jamrock, but... A sigh. She doesn't think you'll need it. Hmm. It's been a pleasure, ma'am. She's she is so cool. She's like the uh was she the first? I might be right. I think she apart from the blonde lady, I think she was the first character I talked to in this game. She's always been really nice to me. Likewise, sweetie. Thank you for everything. Truly. Even though it turned out to be a the sentence remains unfinished. A waste of time. A lie. A fool's hope. 
say her lips move him in silence. Like that, she drives off. The gas engine flutters quietly as she gets to the doors, then pushes them open. Outside, it's snowing. All right, okay. <laughs> that was not quietly. <laughs> we should go to. Yeah, we should. Man, poor little lady. So sad. Well. Eh. Uh, I don't have a quest for it anymore. I don't think. Strange. All right. I don't have another skill point. Damn. I don't even have a hat. Oh, I do have a hat. Minus one in perception. Do I really want to do that to myself? I mean, that thing looks like ass. Um, and I want a cool hat if I'm going to wear a hat. Yeah. Yeah. I'm liking my threads right now. I'll just leave them like that. Okay. Poor little lady. All right. I'm just I'm just thinking to myself, should we call in the 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 boardwalk thing first or should I go and talk to Plaisance and the dice maker to tell them about what happened? Because I feel like I'm going to be if I phone in the police stuff, I'll be opening something new. Whereas it would be nice to actually close down a few little things before I do. So yeah, I'm going to go to the bookstore. Let's talk to the little girl again, see if there's anything new there. Hello, sir. How is the investigation going? Found any curses yet? Going fine, I think. That's very good to hear. You'll get to the bottom of this in no time. Just right. like a detective in the stories. I do like your confidence in me. Okay, bye. Nice little girl. Alright, let's talk to this crazy book lady, goddamn. Hello, crazy book lady. Hello again, esteemed officer. Uh, and welcome to crime, romance, and biographies of famous people. Uh, Blazance, I have something to tell you. I find the actual source of doom. What do you mean, actual source? I thought this issue was resolved. Hmm. My investigation has led me to discover a two millimeter intrapanetic hole in reality. That's the source of doom, both in the commercial area and in Martinez. Uh, a what? A tiny hole in reality. It may be connected with pale, an origin point of sorts. It would explain why historically so many things have ended up in failure here in Martinez. Ma'am, what he's saying is true. We found an anthropogenetic anomaly in the small Pinewood church down the coast. I don't mean to be an alarmist, and more research is needed, but... It's not looking good. But, but that's not in any of the ancient texts. How am I supposed to protect my bookstore from that? You can't protect it. Not against Pale. Close up shop and try to get as far away from this thing as possible. Uh, you can protect it with hope by refusing to give up. That's what people have done in the past by building a church, a place of worship around this thing. Uh, no, nah, we'll go with it. Uh, well, hold on. It's not like I want her to go away. She's just really annoying, you know. I'll go with number two. You're right, officer. I can't just leave everything. After all this work, this little bookstore has become the corner store of our neighborhood. That's why I it's. Can't just jump the ship and leave. Cornerstone. Oh uh, uh, yeah, because business is booming. Besides, didn't I have some sailite hope catchers around here somewhere? I must find them. Everything will be all right if I can just find them. You're a crazy woman. Thank you for your help in any case. You're welcome back here anytime. Farewell for now, book peddler. All right, let's go. Talk to the dice maker. It is kind of strange, though, that the bookstore still there and the dice maker has been able to make a living. 
Oops, I didn't mean to do that. Uh, flashlight, 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 flashlight. Tools, flashlight, there we go. Uh, this way. Thought. Oh, hold on. I want to get that thought back. There we go. Poor animals. No rest for their bodies after death. Okay. Well, hold on. I want to put my flashlight away. That was a blinder. Oh, it's you again. Are you looking for a die? I have more. Do I have more I'm questions? Looking. No, I don't. Oh, I know. I have more questions about the intercom. I'm pretty sure it still doesn't work. Okay. But sure. I'm listening. Good. All right. I hope it clarified things a bit. I think what I find. Else? I think I find the actual source of the curse. I thought we agreed that the curse isn't real. Yes, well, about that. I'm listening. <sighs> There's a two millimeter hole in reality located in a church on the other side of the canal. I think it may be related to the pale. Excuse me? A two millimeter hole in reality? This can't be true. It is. I'm afraid it is, man. So now look and kill her. The former lead programmer of Fortress Accident made the discovery. Sona is involved in this? She appears to take this in while the chatter from her headphones continues unabated. So it's even worse than I thought. It's not just the commercial area that's cursed. It's the entire world. She looks outside the window where daylight has filled the yard. What? No. Uh, well, actually, no. We we did say, didn't we? We had we we made the assumption. Although I don't think people took me seriously at the end of the conversation with Sona, when we said that eventually the whole world will uh, be enveloped by it or something. And she said, "Well, I'm not going to put that in the report, but there's a lot that she can report to explain things." Uh. Yeah, what? No, I wouldn't go as far as to say the entire world is doomed. Just Martinez? She gives you a rueful smile and takes a look around. In any case, thank you for stopping by. No problem. Good to have an answer, even if I can't claim to understand it fully. Let's leave. Oh well, we have done our duty. We have informed the public. Or at least the citizens that will be affected by it. And we have done that well. There's a lot of noises in this place. <laughs> it's kind of weird. Alright, let's get out of here. That's a lovely piano piece. Alright, let's get out of here and head to the police car and phone in the dead body on the boardwalk. I'm also going to put my torch away because it's daylight outside and I'm not that weird. I'm also not weird enough to be wearing hats indoors. Uh, wrong screen. No, nope, that's the wrong screen as well. This is it. There we go. Hello, Annette. Nice to see you again. Lovely weather we are having. Hmm. Uh, where's the car? There it is. Inside, you see a set of steering levers, a radio microphone, a pull-out toolbox, and the soft glow of the fuel preheater gauge. Okay, let's pick up the radio. This is Precinct 57. How may I assist you? Uh, connect me to Jamrock Public Library. No, I need to report a dead body on the Martinez boardwalk. One moment. 
You can hear her shuffling through papers. Can you please describe the body? Age, sex, cause of death? An unidentified middle aged man, height 170 to 175 centimeters, dark hair, medium build. Looks like he slipped, fell through the hole in the boardwalk, and hit his head against the metal bench. We suspect he might have been inebriated when he fell. There were bottles all around him and traces of vomit on his shirt. Yummy. Any signs of violence? Uh, no, seems like it was an accident. No field autopsy necessary. She repeats. You can hear her quickly typing in the background. What about his belongings? Did you examine his clothes? He was wearing boots, trousers, and an old leather jacket with a blue, bright blue lining. I found a library card in his pocket. Any information on the library card? It's from Central Jamrock Public Library. It belongs to someone named Billy Mijon. Good. You have a lead. I know. Do you and Luton Kitsuragi want to take the case, or should I assign it to someone else? We are taking the case. I have assigned the case to Luton Kitsuragi. Please follow up on this library lead to identify the man. We'll send someone to take the body to the morgue. Epic. That's all for now. She Thank looks, you for reporting in. Is there looks, anything else I can do for you? She looks quite pretty. Connect me to Jamrock Public Library. I'm afraid they're closed. It's clear oh. that the library is open from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Damn, I'll have to get them tomorrow then. We should try again during business hours. All right. Anything else, detective? I'm done with the radio for now. 57, over and out. Her voice disappears into the void. In the cabin, you see a set of steering levers, a radio on a hook, a pull-out toolbox, and the soft glow of the few. Let's close the door. All right. I think this is a good place to end this episode for now. Um, I'm going to have a little think about what quest I want to pursue next. Uh, while I do that, I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this video. And if you did, you can always hit that like button. If you're wanting to stick around for the remainder of the game playthrough or anything else that I cover in the future, make sure to hit the subscribe button as well before you go. Uh, for now though, uh, take care. And uh, I will catch you in the next episode. Bye.